let me jump to Nesking web page. Uh, I start uh, from scratch, really as a, uh, as a new user, I want to get a free trial of the software. I will just put my name, an email, my country. I will act as an individual or organization. That's it. And you select your, I am uh, engineering. And uh, of course, you must accept terms of use and privacy policy. And we sign up. So after you sign up, uh, you will get an email within a few seconds or a few minutes, depending. I already got it. So the email uh, will ask you to verify your email account. And uh, actually, I'm opening my email registration. So this is the, the email I got. And uh, I will just verify my email address. Sometimes uh, this email may go to your uh, spam folder. So please make sure you check your uh, spam folder. So when you verify it, now you will be asked to define a password. Let me make it not so complicated. Vest123. And we can continue. I'll make sure I'll change the password later. And now my account is, uh, is, is created. I also got an email of confirmation. And now I can join with my username. And sign in. So the first time you sign up, uh, you will have to uh check this so basically uh, we recommend some configuration in the chrome browser basically since when we make a diagram we will need to save the diagram uh, by default the browser will not ask you to location of file or file name so what we can do is we can go to chrome settings and go to the advanced downloads and here uh, we, normally this is switched off and we can switch it on. So basically Chrome is asking always to uh, define where we want to save something and also which name we want to give. You can also specify a default location for uh, your files. Uh, but uh, in any case, Chrome will remember last to use the location. By the way, this is important. Ask where we want to store the files. Now that I have this setting done, I accept it and I can continue. Next setting is uh, I want to define my drawing unit metric and I save. Uh, unlike HydroCAD, uh, these settings in parallel metric is not making much difference except for the title block uh, in the drawing. In HydroCAD, it would involve also units, but in NetScheme, we don't have uh, at present uh, uh, units. Um, of course, we can go to our account and where we can directly purchase monthly subscription or a yearly subscription. We can uh, provide feedback. We can also get help. And this is the um, online help that we provide, describing a bit of the workspace and some commands. But the help is directly accessible uh, within the software. Uh, we can open files, or we can start a new file, uh, or we can just uh, sign out and sign in again with a different account. But let me try this one. And now we start uh, our, our journey with NetSchema. In case something is not uh, working properly, sometimes we ask a user to clear cache uh, in the browser. There is a quick way to do that in Chrome. If you type F12, F12 will open the Chrome console but uh, we don't need now the console. This can be used to troubleshoot if something is wrong uh, happening in the, in the software. But opening the console will allow you to, with a right click on the top left browser, to have this command, empty cache and hard reload. Sometimes if you feel uh, slowness or uh, drawing not loading properly, just uh, do that, empty cache and hard reload, and this will uh, uh, go back to uh, original state. We can uh, start a new drawing. Uh, let me take an A4. 
and this is my drawing canvas. If I'm not happy by A3, A4, I can just change it uh, just by using the command uh, here on top in the middle, A3 or and let me switch to an A3. If you don't like the grid, just uh, uh, you find here it's a F4. You just press function four or you click uh, the bottom left command. There are some other commands similar to some AutoCAD settings. So although in this case, I'm not showing the grid, I have a snap to grid on. And uh, you can switch on and off uh, object snap like uh, AutoCAD, although this is behaving uh, differently than, uh, than AutoCAD. Um, if you want to place a symbol, you just uh, load the uh, browser, symbol browser, which is automatically hiding. If you want to keep it visible, just mouse over and pin it. The second command is uh, to place symbols from your local library. I'll show you later how to build a symbol and a place in the drawing. But basically this command will open uh, your file explorer where you can find your custom build symbols. Uh, on the left, uh, all the symbols are arranged into folders. So for instance, we want an electric motor. So we click on a folder and enter in a folder and with a double click, we can place the symbol in the drawing. So if we want to start building a small uh, uh, motor pump group, so let me find, uh, uh, let me see. Well, I just pressed F5. Uh, let me go for a pump and double click and place my symbol of the pump. I go back to my reservoir power unit components. I need a coupling set and I need also a bell housing. If you wanted to group, I just select them, right click and group. So now the selection will be one and you can move uh, just using arrow keys. Uh, with a right click, you can also move the symbol and this behaves like AutoCAD move. So you start and end. So, but really it's much easier with this kind of tool to just select and use the arrow key. This is uh, um, very, very easy to use. Now we start, uh, let's say that we have a manifold, so we need to put a relief valve, a check valve on a manifold. And we have a search for symbol that is based on model code. So basically, if you look for a check valve and you know a model code of a check valve, like um, in this case, I'm taking a CV10, that's a Hydroforce um, check valve. Um, although I'm not placing directly an Hydroforce component, this is just a quick way to find the symbols. So here I could find uh, quickly a check valve. And uh, uh, like in this case, I want to take a relief valve. The, the search here, uh, you must type at least four digits. So if you use a two star, it will search all the symbols that are linked to components starting with DB. So in this case, there will be a lot of symbols. Uh, there are a lot of molecules uh, for German manufacturer uh, starting with DB, which is the, uh, D stands for Druck, and uh, that's pressure in German. And we just place a symbol that we want. To rotate a symbol, you can select and rotate uh, left, and we can move the symbol. The balloon, uh, you can move it where you want. And again, uh, you just select the symbol and, and use the arrow key to, to move them. Um, let's say that we need a filter. So we go to the filter symbols, uh, filter, let's say single filter. And we need a filter with a bypass and maybe with an electric contact. This is good and we want to flip it upside down. And of course we can move where we want. Let me stretch the envelope. 
and let's start making connection. So we can directly make connection using the uh, this com this uh, uh, menus on the on the top. Let me highlight with a pen. Not a good color. Let me change color. Right. Uh, so this toggle is to make auto connect or not. So when this is uh, enabled, like in this case, I just select the connection type and start point and end point. Start point and end point. Start point and end point. Automatically, the symbols may go to the grid. Uh, let me just ungroup them and I want to move it. So when I moved that uh, that subsystem, I went it off grid. So it's easier to work with the grid. You will save time by working in the grid. Uh, if you wanted to place uh, external ports on, uh, on an envelope, uh, you can just use the manifold port command. And there you can select the port type and the port name. Let's say that uh, I need a port uh, named uh, P1. Well, let's say that's a BSP three by four. With a double click, we put the port here and we can keep doing connection. You can copy ports within the drawing. Uh, you just right click, copy selection, start point and end point, or easier, Control C, Control V, and you place the port where you want. Automatically, the port is rotated according to where you are placing in the envelope line. And uh, we can move the port here. Automatically, the port will not break connection line. You just need to select the line and uh, reconnect and make the other segment. Uh, let's say this is not a, a G3 by four, that's a test point. We call it MP. With a double click, we edit the components and we can uh, change the port size. And we can move the, the port where we want and automatically it is rotated. Uh, let's cut it. And uh, let's say that uh, our valve is going to tank. And we have a, a strainer, filter, strainer that we put in front of our pump. Always double click. It's easier to use double click. You could also drag and drop, but with double click, you can really see where the symbol is going to, to fall in the drawing. Let's say that our system has an accumulator, a bladder accumulator. So we go back to our symbols on the accumulator side. So we need the bladder accumulator. We put it here. And we take uh, uh, always in the accumulator, we take a uh, discharge valve. Let's take some, uh, this one. So we have the shutoff valve for loading the accumulator and unloading uh, relief valve and uh, electric unloading. And we put our valve here. Let me flip it horizontally. And uh, I put this uh, here and let me connect with a P line. And I need the tank line. Let me go here. If you don't like how the connection is made, select the line and just make it add more band as you want. Let me take a gauge port, pressure gauge. So here we want a pressure gauge. And maybe here we need the same pressure gauge. And a pressure switch. If you are familiar with model code like an IFM, you can search it. Uh, uh, PT540. 
So this is a model code of IFM pressure switch and you can find it directly with a double click. But again, this is mainly to find uh, the symbol. If you want to define uh, item number, you select a symbol, right click and edit. So here we can type the part number. So uh, it's PT540, the manufacturer is IFM and it is pressure switch. So you can apply uh, information to each component. So like in this case, uh, this is a VICA and description is a pressure gauge or the filter, double click, that's a HUDAC and the description is a pressure filter and so on. So you can fill in all the information for the components in the drawing. Let me connect. And of course, in my small power unit, so this line will go to some other valves, but let's concentrate on the power unit. I will need a reservoir. So it is possible to draw uh, with, uh, on the right, we have commands to make uh, lines and geometry. So let me make a rectangle. So technically you could make uh, lines, circles, arcs, and so on in the, in the drawing application. Uh, but it's not making a symbol. Basically, this is only complementary to what you are drawing. Uh, basically, in this case, I want a new symbol. So it is possible to build the new symbols on the fly just by using the My Symbol library. So when you enter in My Symbol library, um, HydroCAD uh, Net Scheme will open a different dialog. Uh, that is the symbol build mode. So in symbol beam mode, uh, the grid is getting thinner so that we have an easier uh, snap and an easier possibility to align items. And uh, we can use any symbol from the library to start from. So let's say that I need to build a reservoir starting from this symbol, but I don't like it. So let me select and let me move uh, entities up. So I want a taller symbol. If you want to use a snap, press F3 so that it is easier to snap to drawing entities. And also here. And the item ID is represented by this question mark. So it is the position of the balloon. And uh, let's say that this is going to be slightly there. And we want uh, another line. And uh, you can use the uh, copy attributes to apply the same uh, drawing style to entities in the drawing. So it's not like AutoCAD, of course, but you can do some uh, 3D drafting to, to complement your uh, symbol. Uh, in the ISO building blocks, you find a lot, a lot of uh, smart elements that help you with building uh, new symbols. I always think it's easier to start from uh, uh, existing symbols because most of the geometry is already made, but you can really start from scratch. Now, if you want to use this symbol, you must save it to your library. So with uh, this command, you save symbol. Well, you can define the insertion point of the symbol, which is basically where the symbol is going to, to to be placed from. And uh, now I put this uh, intersection. So when I place the symbol, this will be the base point of my symbol. And then I can save my symbol. Uh, in this case, I have not specified any uh, connection point. So I get a warning from the software, but yes, I'm uh, doing uh, just a symbol that is really is not connected to anything else with the external ports. So now uh, NetScheme is uh, building a small DWG file with uh, embedding into an image and we'll see it and we can save where we want. So let's put uh, in our uh, folder, custom symbols. And uh, let's call it the webinar symbol. 
As you see, the file is a PNG, so it's easy to view also when we want to use it. Let me save it. Now we can exit the build symbol mode. We don't need to save again. We already saved our symbol. As you have seen, I have never saved my document, my drawing. It's always there. It's saved in the cloud. Even if I jump to the home, no problem. I can get back here. Uh, if you want, you can download the DDG file. So in this case, you are saving locally. But the working document is always here available, even if you disconnect. So let me, oh, by mistake, I closed my browser. So let me go back. Uh, next game. Login. Of course, I log in with my username. And sign in. It's warning me that there was another session. Yes, I'm aware of. This warning is important because if you have two users with the same uh, ID uh, using NetScheme, when you click yes, uh, this will uh, kill the other session. So you will enter as a, uh, your own. And now, as you see, I didn't lose anything. I didn't save, but I didn't lose anything. Now let me place my uh, reservoir. So it's uh, in my library, my symbol. Uh, it was in the folder called the custom symbols and webinar symbol. With a double click, you place the symbol exactly with that insertion point and we can put it here. Let me move these elements down. And let's go back to the symbol and find some uh, additional elements like uh, air breather. And then we need uh, um, temperature switch, fluid level indicator with the temperature. This is fine. And we can connect to the tank. Always moving up, the balloon can be moved where we want. If you need to specify additional information, you can use the text. So text is maybe here as a 100 bar, pressure setting. And the text is applied maybe here as a 500 liter volume, or here as a 1.5 kilowatt power and 10 as displacement. So you can complement with text. Um, we have the possibility to uh, reassign all the numbers, although technically you can double click and change the ID as you want. 22, 44, with a double click it's easy. Otherwise you double click on the symbol and you will see the item ID where you can, uh, you can put the information and where you can also define other attributes. Uh, with the item ID, this command will uh, renumber all items in drawing starting from left to the right. And, uh, and now we can really make a part list. So the part list will be placed automatically in the drawing. And if there are identical items, let me make an example, let me move here. So let's say that uh, this item is identical to the other one. So let me delete and copy. Well, I didn't put any molecule. Let's say the molecule is uh, uh, WK123. And this one also is uh, WK123. So although they have different uh, ID, 16 and 14, when we make the part list, now these items will be grouped in the drawing as item 14, 16 with a molecule and with the description and the item number. Uh, that's a table, so uh, it is controlled by the attribute. If you want to change it, you must edit the attributes for the components in the diagram and create the part list. It is possible to create additional tables and you can define a number of rows and columns if you needed to specify additional information. This is done uh, 
manually. So you place the table and there you can just type in, uh, let's say, port size, port ID, site type. Let me change them. So unlike HydroCAD, the NetScheme is unable to create a port list on the fly. Automatically, you just can do it. P1, P and P1 are the three by four BSP port. And then we have MP as a one by four BSP. And then you can make the, the tables that you want. You can also change the size of columns and tables as you want and move the table where we want. Always remember arrow key is working very fine to move tables uh, or just to select with the mouse, left mouse click and then you move the table where you want. When you are done with your diagram, you can save it as a DWG and there it will ask you to save where you want. Let me put in my desktop, that's the a net scheme webinar. That's a DWG. You can open with AutoCAD or with HydroCAD, no problem. If you need help, just click on the question mark and this will open uh, the help and so you can find the samples and, uh, and information, videos, video tutorial. We are improving uh, so if you find uh, some items not uh, very good just feel free to ask us and we will be happy to to improve uh, the help but uh, i think it's easier really to to play with it it's uh, very intuitive and uh, fast you don't need to worry about uh, installing software uh, saving uh, it's all done and if you need a pdf this is done really on one go PDF and automatically we get a PDF, which we can open and that's a, a good PDF. As a last information, since I have also AutoCAD, let's see what happens if uh, as an AutoCAD user, I open uh, this, uh, this file uh, that I have made today with AutoCAD. The same will happen if you open with a 3D CAD application or a 2D CAD application. So I can just go and open my file, which was saved in the desktop. Netscheme webinar, open, keep doing. And it, this is our, our diagram. As you see, all the entities are really AutoCAD blocks. And here you can go on and do all the modification that you need with, with AutoCAD. Interestingly, any change you make with AutoCAD, if you save again, now, if we go back here, we will be happy to go to the home and open. Now it is asking to save because when you open or start a new drawing, uh, then it means that we are uh, wiping out what we have in the working space. So I have already just saved, so I don't need to save. I just open my document. Uh, of course, I need to first close here. And now I open in my drawing canvas. And here it is with those entities that are recognized and I can modify.